This is Mission Control Houston. The International Space Station crew has executed an awful lot of important science operations on board this week. While they have been uh, in parallel, getting themselves ready to support the planned arrival of a commercial cargo ship at the station this weekend. Commander Kevin Ford kicked off the uh, week with a couple of days worth troubleshooting a piece of hardware called the Amin Swing Bed. That's a technology demonstration payload that's testing whether vacuum generated Amin system could work as an effective system to remove carbon dioxide from a spacecraft uh, environment, from the crew area. Uh, he did determine that a suspect valve was not responsible for the hardware's inability to work and did find that the culprit was a gearbox, a gearbox that was removed and prepared for a return to Earth for analysis. Uh, Ford and flight engineer Tom Marshburn joined up late in the day to practice operations with the Canadarm2 for the scheduled grapple and berthing of the uh, Dragon cargo ship, which launched this morning at 9.10 Central Time from the uh, Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Flight engineer Chris Hatfield helped prepare for Dragon by getting some special, a special communications system for Dragon operations uh, set up in the cupola module and then packing items that are scheduled to be returned to Earth when Dragon uh, comes back in late March. Hadfield also took care of science payloads, initializing the binary colloidal alloy test apparatus and photographing some samples for that physical science investigation. He was also looking over training materials for a material science investigation called coarsening in solid liquid mixtures, which has new experiment sample materials on its way to the station now. Flight engineers Yevgeny Terelkin and Oleg Novitsky began preparations for their departure from the station. Along with uh, Commander Kevin Ford, Novitsky and Terelkin are scheduled to leave the station in two weeks' time. And uh, this week they began their first of several days' work with the lower body negative pressure suit. That's a Russian apparatus that uses suction to pull fluids to the lower extremities and simulate gravity and allows the cosmonauts to evaluate their orthostatic stability. Tuesday of this week was a science focus day with Tom Marshburn spending much of it supporting the Spheres Vertigo experiment. That's an MIT Space Systems Laboratory investigation that employs two of the bowling ball sized satellites, the Spheres satellites, uses them to create a 3D model of another object with the intent that the model that's created could then be used to inform the autonomous navigation of those free flyers. Kevin Ford started Tuesday with a health status questionnaire, part of the ongoing effort to gather information about how human bodies respond to being in the zero-g environment for an extended period. He then loaded software on a laptop in the Columbus module for later operations with a European Space Agency investigation into ways to improve crew efficiency and autonomy. He spent the rest of the day finishing that troubleshooting with the Amin swing bed. On Wednesday, the uh, commander spent the big part of his morning working on elements of the cruise experiment, the ESA technology demonstrator of possible ways to improve efficiency of the crew. Uh, Ford worked with the voice-activated procedure viewer and procedural displays. He was testing ways in which crew members can be more autonomous and more efficient in work, something that would be even more critical for future explorers on missions where communication with Earth is much harder than it is for the crews today. Hatfield and Marshburn spent time Wednesday on the integrated cardiovascular experiment. This one aims to quantify the decrease in the size of a crew member's heart muscle over time while in weightlessness. That's just one component of the research documenting how human bodies are affected by being in a space environment with an eye towards discovering ways to counteract the negative effects. Flight engineer Roman Romanenko assisted Yevgeny Terelkin with another session of the lower body negative pressure suit, the routine Russian protocol for returning crew members. Later, he joined his Soyuz crewmates, uh, Hatfield and Marshburn, for a routine emergency descent drill. That's a uh, standard for all crews. Uh, Romanenko, Hatfield and Marshburn not scheduled to return to Earth until May. On Thursday, Novitsky and Terelkin spent half the day laying cables in the Russian segment of the station to support the plasma wave experiment that's going to measure the electromagnetic field around the outside of the station. 
The exterior hardware installation for that experiment is planned for a spacewalk by Romanenko and cosmonaut Pavel Vinogradov in April. Vinogradov will be arriving at the station in late March with uh, Alexander Mazurkin and Chris Cassidy. Romanenko spent uh, part of his day on Thursday taking surface samples in the Russian segment and seeing to science experiment operations in the afternoon. After lunch, Novitsky worked to stow items that are destined for disposal in one of the progress ships that's docked to the Russian segment, and Torelkin did maintenance, as well as shot scenes for a Russian documentary about station payload operations. There were a couple of tasks on the agenda on Thursday for Chris Hadfield, including an interview with the popular Canadian TV network morning show, and then the final pre-packing of items that are scheduled to come back to Earth on the Dragon spacecraft. Uh, Tom Marshburn even set up an HD camera in the lab that will shoot the uh, robotic workstation monitors there so that the mission control teams can follow along and see what the arm operators are doing during those dynamic operations on Saturday. The uh, crew members would actually be working in the cupola on Saturday. The camera is shooting at the backup station in the lab. Kevin Ford, Chris Hatfield, Tom Marshburn all had regular exercise sessions but little else on their schedules for Thursday. They got time off Thursday and Friday to rest up in advance for the weekend operations with the Dragon spacecraft. In fact, Hadfield, uh, rather uh, Ford and Marshburn had their final training for robotics operations for the Dragon today. The uh, second operational flight of the uh, vehicle from SpaceX did launch on Friday morning, carrying 1,200 pounds of science experiment materials and crew supplies scheduled to be uh, grappled on Saturday morning by the crew members at the controls of the uh, Canada Arm II uh, robotic manipulator, and then uh, through use of the arm ground commanded, berthed to the uh, Harmony module with a hatch opening scheduled for Sunday to allow the crew to start unloading supplies as well as the uh, food and experiment materials that are needed to support their own mission of exploration.